Impressive work, 47. Let me know when you're ready for your next assignment. Hi, I'm Jimmy, and this is episode two of my Hitman Freelancer Let's Play. Um, this is all, this is footage from my first ever campaign in Hitman Freelancer. Each time you um, return to the safe house, I'll provide you with a free item. You can only pick one out of three, so think carefully before choosing. So yeah, that's, it lets you choose tools. I, I think I picked the poison syringe there, because it helps with my objectives. Yeah. So I have a lethal syringe and an unsilenced pistol. Ready to start the next mission on Haven Island. So yeah, since this is my first time playing it, I'm very... You will see a lot of sloppy play in this. Intel tells us that there are syndicate members in the area. I'm still getting the hang of this game mode at the, at the time of this recording. By now, by now I've, I've gotten better, although I'm still... Still haven't managed to beat beat an entire campaign yet, so I guess spoilers for this one. It's not going to be, not going to make it to the final showdown. So I was trying to see if you could pick up your key. That's something you normally you can do in the regular mission, but they don't they don't let you here. So now I'm looking around to see my target. I have the optional objective to poison the target, poison target with a dart gun and poison target sedative. I don't have sedative poisons or a dart gun. But I do have a lethal syringe, so I'm hoping to at least get the poison target objective. So there's this woman here who's my first target. At this point I'm just scouting. Oh, and there's a, a crate there that has uh, goodies. But unfortunately behind the bar is a trespassing zone, so I would need a different disguise if I wanted to go back there. So right now I'm just sort of scouting around. <clears throat> Yeah, one thing I really love about Freelancer is it feels very different from playing a normal Hitman mission. Like, in the regular game, Hitman is all about planning and preparation. It's all about getting the right tools, finding the right opportunities, and, you know, trying to set up the perfect kill. And if you make a mistake, you know, you just start over or you reload from the last save. You don't... That usually is where I stop. And here I pick the Golden Idol, which, as we will see, is a mistake. For a very silly reason. The, the Golden Idol has some special special rules. But anyway, what I like about Freelancer is it forces you to improvise and adapt on the fly. But that's something I'm not really used to. And at this point, I'm very much not used to it. So I'll be sort of calling out the sort of dumb mistakes I make as I'm playing this. So here I see my target. So I'm trying to lure her into this bush or I'm hoping to poison her unnoticed step back and let me deal with this thanks okay I mean fine. honestly Charles I've been curating oh my god for some reason like no one came over to investigate I was thinking if if a friend came over I could at least maybe knock him out but uh, something's I think it didn't work because the guy saw me and figured out oh he was coming over to investigate I think that's what threw me off I don't know you. So, and that's where having the golden idol instead of an iron screws me. Is the golden idol has special rules, where if you pick it up, that's considered an illegal action. Holding it's not illegal. Carrying it around is not illegal. But for some reason, picking it up out of the bushes counts as a crime. And now I've been caught, and people have caught got onto this disguise. And this is the sort of situation you know I wouldn't normally get into in. A regular game. I would at this point I realized, oh, I made a dumb mistake. Let me try that again. But uh, freelancer doesn't exactly give you a. Technically, you can force quit the game, and you will have an opportunity to play the mission again. But that kind of, in my mind, that defeats the purpose of playing freelancer. I mean, if you enjoy it, if you enjoy playing that way, I know a lot of people do. Like, I certainly don't fault anyone for that. It's your game. Play it how you want. One thing I will say is that playing it this way is a very different experience. Like, normally, because Hitman is all about planning, it can be a very relaxing, very stress-free experience. But this is a very high-stress game mode. I can't play it for long stretches. So there... Oh, great glitch, by the way. He clipped into the bike and did a backflip into the ocean. That was mildly hilarious, but also annoying. I, uh, I got a punch glitch there. I was trying to inject him with the syringe, but uh, either because his back wasn't fully turned turned to me or because uh, he was like on a slope maybe getting on the dead skis counts as standing on a slope 
Oh, there. I got spotted by the camera, and now those security guards are mad at me. That's something I'm not used to, because I normally don't walk around in a disguise that's compromised. I normally I just save and reload. But once, you're, once you've once you been compromised, you have to be much more careful about cameras. Because if they spot you, they will send guards after you. So now I need to change disguises. Anyway, yeah, the, so the punch glitch, as it's known, is kind of an annoying quirk of Hitman, where... Okay. They have the same button press to do stealthy actions like a silent takedown, or injecting someone with a syringe, or garroting someone with a fiber wire. But then the same button, that only works if you're behind them. Oh, this is an annoying bit of timing. I was trying to lure the security guard so I could knock him out, but then that guy walks out at just the wrong moment, so I have to try again. But yeah, the thing with the punch glitch is you, you from behind, you press the square button for PlayStation, and he does a sneaky takedown, or a syringe injection, or something similar. But if they're stand, but if you're standing in front of, if you're standing in front of them, or to the side of them, or if you're only three quarters of the way behind them, you just punch them in the face, and it's very annoying when that happens, because it ruins what you were trying to do. But here, I managed to choke out the security guard and get a fresh disguise, and now I'm no longer compromised. So, and yeah, normally, it's the kind of thing that, like, like I, I think I might have said this in the last video, but when I'm normally playing it, man, I don't mind the glitches. I've sort of gotten used to them, and I know how to work around them. Like, I know what parts of the levels are janky, where guards can see through walls, or I know, like, how to be, go slowly and be careful and avoid the punch glitch. But here, like, it, you're doing a lot of things. You're, you're often... Often your targets are in different locations that you're not used to, you know, not, I'm not used to assassinate someone standing in the garden here, so I don't really have a strategy for it. I mean, honestly, Charles, I've been... So here I make a distraction, I get the syringe ready, I'm hoping I can get at least one of these objectives completed. With the benefit of hindsight, I should have just not worried about stealth, I could have poisoned her right here. It would have been an illegal action, but I'm not far from an exit. I could have gotten away with it, but I decided to try and lure her back here, thinking I'll be sneaky. And in a second, we'll see how that goes. I try to get behind her, but then she turns around. For a split second I was behind her, I probably could have gotten away with it. But then I think, I must be behind her. You don't, she's not on screen, but I just assumed I was walking behind her, I would be able to inject her with a syringe. But no. Instead, she must have turned slightly, or something must have happened, so I punch her instead. You've spread fear within the so, yep, again, no optional objectives completed. I'm being hunted again, but there's an exit right here. So once again, despite a ton of sloppy play, I get away with it, and I move on to the next mission. Yeah, I'd say, like... 90% of getting good at Freelancer is just learning how to improvise and adapt on the fly, learning how to respond when you get spotted or caught out. Because there's a skill to it. There's a skill to it where if you, you know, don't run away immediately, a lot of times... I mean, it's really more knowing when to run away and when to stick Excellent. around. Sometimes if you just stick around, people will calm down and you'll be fine and you'll be able to, like, get away. Other times, you just have to run. You need to just get out of there as fast as you can. But yeah, I, like, I feel like half the struggle in the Freelancer is just I have provided you getting good at knowing what to do when things go wrong. Identity. Here we get another gadget for our box. Take the sedative syringe. Now we're going to head to Isle Scale for a showdown. Oh yeah, I think there's a lot of time for that. So yeah, half the skill is just like learning how to improvise and learning how to adapt. The other big skill is just if you're going to do something that's even a little bit risky, be ready for things to go wrong and have like have a plan for how you're going to escape. Like if you need to take a shot and you're pretty sure no one will spot you. Well, Diane's going to talk forever, by the way. She's going to give us all the info about our target. Anyway, just going to say, like, if you have an idea that something might go wrong, even a little bit, you think that's possible, you just 
be ready to target? know have an escape plan already in mind so that you can just hydration? run for the That's exit and get away from get out of danger and most of all good luck so yeah that on showdown missions uh we don't know who our target is we have a single target but we don't know who they are we have six suspects that have been identified for us and we have a series of clues that we need to use there are four visible traits like what they're wearing or you know whether or not they have a tattoo or whether or not they wear glasses um and then there are two tells those are behaviors that they will engage in whether it's you know smoking or drinking you know eating snacks or something else so you have to use that oh and there's like a meeting type there's the what what they're here to do what kind of meeting they're here to engage in because every each of the suspects is here engaging in some kind of clandestine meeting so we just need to we need to use those clues to identify our target and then and then kill them and uh, you can if you kill the wrong target you don't fail but it is a penalty uh, you lose a thousand mercers which is the which is the currency unit I only have 500 so if I kill the wrong target even once I'm gonna be broke but at this stage that's fine if you can find a way to you know kill them all it can be worth the penalty but yeah the other challenge with showdowns besides the fact that you don't know who your target is is the fact that if the target or their lookouts get spooked the target will flee the level and you have a limited opportunity you have a limited time window to take them out so it's very challenging there i'm using i didn't have a distraction normally i would have like thrown something to distract the guard to bring him over here I didn't have that, so instead I placed a gun on the ground, uh, which causes the guard to leave, so he can put the gun away in a safe place. And while he is distracted, I can take knock out his buddy and drag his body out into the grass and take his disguise. So yeah, sh so showdowns are very difficult. Like with practice, I've gotten a lot better at the regular missions there are still depending on the target and the level it can be hard but uh these sh these showdowns are a real pain in the ass because you have to like follow the targets around you basically have to like trail them and like wait for them to like at first you have to look at them you have to get a close look at them see if they have like a tiny earring or a tiny tattoo hidden somewhere or what depending on what your clues are and then Usually, once you do that, you're usually still left with two suspects that perfectly match the description. And so you have to follow them around and see which one has the right tells. Which involves, like, following them, and sometimes they're glitched and they just stand in one location for, like, five or ten minutes. So, these are a little frustrating, but, uh, there is a knack to them, and there are some tricks you can use to make it easier. So here I'm just I trying to get a good look at these people to see if they match the clues. So be careful. So I'm going to pull up my comp camera in a second. The camera like, will show you what, what the clues are that you're looking for. Oh, oh there's a lookout. Lookouts are also annoying. Lookouts are... Evening. They're enforcers for like... They're usually enforcers for your suit and also any I guard like outfits. You to something new that we've developed. So I'm trying to see if this guy has any earrings. On possible suspects. He has blonde hair, he has a hat, he has glasses. I guess can't tell if he has earrings or not. Blood spilled, after all. Check your intel for and earrings is particularly annoying because it can be a tiny stud and it can be in only one ear. So you have to get like a very zoomed in picture of both ears to confirm that someone is your... Whether or not someone has earrings. Tattoos are similarly very difficult. It's often like a very tall, small tattoo on the right hand or the left hand. So those those two are like the most annoying visual traits to have to identify someone based on. The other nice thing you can do with the camera is you can mark someone as a suspect or not. So like, I don't think I know that at this point. I haven't done it yet. But I'm sort of looking at people, reminding myself of what the clues are. And uh, you're trying to identify. And this is risky. I'm using the camera, and there's a lookout nearby. It's very easy to get spotted when you're looking at the camera because you kind of have tunnel vision. So here, I don't see her. I don't see an earring on her. So I think I conclude she doesn't have earrings. 
You are not. Oh, I should check both ears. I must have known. For a while, I wasn't sure if earrings could only be on one ear. I found out that, yes, in fact, they can. Which is one of the gotchas of this mode. I kind of wish they made it a little easier. I feel like having to look for a tiny stud in, like, one ear or the other is a very annoying thing to have to do. I feel like, I feel like it wouldn't be too much of a giveaway to make the earrings always be super obvious or the tattoos always be super obvious. But, uh, yeah. I, I really wanted the showdown missions to be a challenge, so... And for a full campaign, you have four showdowns. You have two missions and then a showdown, and then the next one is three missions and another showdown, and so on, until you complete your fourth showdown, and that's considered a full campaign. So this is my first ever showdown. First showdown of my first campaign. Oh yeah, and of course, playing freelancer, you don't have your usual equipment, so I don't have my lockpick. Fortunately, thanks to the uh, default loadout series I've been I've done, I've actually gotten pretty good at navigating around these maps level without a lockpick. The one annoyance is they, they've taken away a lot of crowbars. Or they in some cases they replaced them with a rusted crowbar, which is only good for one use. So uh, here I pick up little flashy. Little flashy is a fun, it's a non-suspicious item. It just looks like a little toy, but it acts like a flashbang. I'm going to try to get use out of that later. That's one of the things, one of the sort of more minor adjustments I wish they'd made to freelancers to let you keep more stuff in your safe house. I really wish you could bring Little Flashy or Napoleon Blown Apart back to your safe house. Those are just like fun little gimmicky things Hi, you can use you again. to try and... Sorry. Suspect seems to be acting Wait, rather covert. Must be a secret meeting. Look into it, forty seven. Ah. Okay. So they're having a secret meeting. So this this uh, woman, the so woman in the beret, here. matches the description. Ooh. She has earrings, a hat, blonde hair, and glasses, and she's got the right secret meeting. I haven't seen any of her tells, but at this point, I think I, I decide I'm ready to take a risk and try and take her out. And I have a plan. Hey, 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 Mister. Just waiting for the right opportunity. And they're getting annoyed with me because I keep interrupting their secret meeting. Please leave, okay? Thank you. Thank you for coming. We've deployed the Alpha Omega. Mind your business, her. Oh, one thing I'm noticing in retrospect is there's both an assassin and a lookout nearby. Assassins are normally not a problem. They're actually convenient, like, they actually carry a silenced pistol, so that's a good way to get a silenced pistol early in the game, is to just knock out an assassin and take their pistol. Honestly, like, if you're struggling and you need a silenced pistol, it's worth failing one of these showdowns. Just knock out an assassin, take his pistol, and leave the mission early. It's, a, it's an easy way to... You'll fail the campaign, and you'll lose half your money, but... It's You're basically out. a free way to get a science pistol. And honestly, if you're struggling, a science pistol can make a world of difference. So here Hello, I decide to enact my plan. Late. A lot of things going Hey, hey, hey. Or not. Mister, I forget when I try to go for this. Here. That Please the woman the yeah, she uh what? she keeps getting close. Uh, okay, sir. I dropped the flashbang. <laughs> my brilliant plan is I thought this would just blind everybody and I'd be able to get away with this, but uh, it doesn't exactly work. There! Punch glitch one last time. I decided to go ahead and take her out. I got lucky there, she did turn out to be my target, but uh, my luck is about to run out. There. With retrospect, well one thing is, the flashbang actually made things worse, because it actually didn't blind the guards and caused them to turn around. With the benefit of hindsight, I can see that was a bad plan. The other mistake is, like, like I mentioned, I didn't have a, an escape route in mind. Would have been better going up the stairs. So yes, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.